Morning, folks. So that's where I've come from this morning. Wonderful views today. So today I'm aiming from Knighton to get over to a place called Brampton Bridge. Basically I'm going over the Shropshire Hills and it's about 15 miles. Now I'm pretty glad that um, when I got to Knighton, which was round about lunchtime-ish, that I decided to stop at that point. I was half tempted to push on, but I've been kind of just come up the first hill, which was pretty steep and ongoing. Yeah, I'm glad I decided to stop and have a rest. Certainly enjoyed me lunch in a local pub, and somebody shared their birthday cake with me, so I feel very honoured. No more talking, I need to get walking. As you can see, it did not take me long to lose the views. I'm hoping the sun will burn off the mist eventually. Now, in one other interesting thing is I've been walking along and I'm thinking, I'm hoping I'm still on the right track. But of course, I have this embankment here, or Offa's Dyke as it is known. And so that is the great thing, sometimes you can be walking along and you have this handrail. As you can see, the mist has cleared away. I can just see a wisp of it in the distance. But yeah, at last. And another thing is that in addition to following Offa's Dyke, I'm not sure you can read that, it's not very clear. We're on the Jack... Uh, we're on the Jack Mizzen Way. So you can see we're following the line of the dike again. But look what we have here. <laughs> not quite sure what that is. Sort of shapes. Maybe a bit like a dragon? It's crashed and died, I'm afraid. As you can imagine, I saw the yellow house from miles away. I did wonder what it was going to look like closer up. It looks pretty ancient. So I'm having a bit of a rest, a drink, something to eat, because I'm having a minor celebration. I'm able to say that I've travelled 149 kilometres and I've only got 136 kilometres to go. So yes, I've got less to go than what I've actually achieved so far. But like I say, I think that deserves a celebration. A celebration in Shropshire on a glorious day like today. What could be better? So, as it says here, this is part of the 80 mile long Offa's Dyke, built by the great Anglo-Saxon King to mark his boundary between Mercia and his enemies, the Prince of Wales. Now it says he may have built, um, built this in the 8th century by joining up earlier dikes to create a single line. And then for me, the interesting question is at the bottom, in terms of why. It says, um, did he build it for defence, to control trade, or to show off his power? There are many theories. What do you think? I actually think it's probably for all of those reasons. It's still a... Every time I say it, I kind of marvel at it. 
given when it was actually built, apparently I found the perfect place to relax, unwind and enjoy. Walkers very welcome, 200 metres. Except of course, for Nigel, that's not the case. Closed on a Monday and Tuesday. Open Wednesday through to Sunday. Well there you go. I do provide an information service. You need to time it better than I did. Right, I think we're going this way. So I guess that was the gatehouse for the hall. In days gone by. Interesting lanterns. Well on the map it actually says Brompton Bridge. So I guess this is the bridge. I suppose that's one good way for the farmers to get reception. Because the farmhouse is just over there. Well there may be some other reasons. Do let me know, if you know. Oh, and here's a plate. So I'm now in what's termed the Vale of Montgomery. And as you can tell from behind me, it's very flat, very different from where we were before. I've actually finished what is described as the toughest section of Office Dyke Path. And it's 15 miles, and the reason it's so tough is it's very much up and down dale. Very steep going up and very steep coming down. Um, so yeah, it, you can really feel it on your legs. That was about 15 miles and over 3,000 feet of climb for the day. On this next section, it's classed as 12 miles and I think it's like half the climb, less than 1,500 feet. So a bit gentler. However, it's about half past three and I'm looking for a wild camping spot now and water as well. So one thing to note is on the stiles it some sign says welcome to Shropshire. Which is all well and good but there's just too many of them. Ah oh, in fact it was crazy in the hills as well. Like you get up to the top of a hill and you have to get over a stile. So whilst waiting for the kettle to boil as it were I'm admiring. Through the steam. Hi guys, well as you can see, I've set up my tent and it's still daylight. In fact, reasonably good daylight too. I suppose it's helped by the fact it's been a sunny day. And the sun is only just setting in the sky now. I'll show you around in a little while in terms of the spot I've got because it's really good. Very close to water, nice running stream and very tranquil where I am. Um, so today I managed to do 17 miles. I just had another two to the kind of like original stage. I think I'm possibly on track for a um, definitely in terms of my original intention between 10 and 12 days so that is good from my point of view and I always feel a bit happier once I've kind of pushed that halfway point so yeah I'll show you around and then I'll get on with my cooking and I'll see you guys in the morning so I've just opened the tent door to be greeted by this frosty morning. I love how the guy ropes are even frosty. Yep, it was one cold night. So you may wonder how I got on last night in terms of sleeping. Hopefully you've seen my video on Four, four Seasons Winter Camping. Um, because obviously all the things that I applied in that video, I certainly was applying last night. Definitely no more talking. I definitely need to be walking. Oh, 
Yes, let's put my rucksack on. These are all very friendly. I think it might be because we're close to a bit of a housing estate. Oh yeah, you're all very friendly. So I'm currently going through what's termed Latham's estate and you can see that it's actually quite a big plantation and it's very much the same for quite a number of miles. But I think one of the advantages of it being on an estate is the fact that the dike here is very much as you would imagine it. Um, where I'm standing, I would say it's probably two or three meters high. And yeah, and it goes along for quite some way here. So guys, I'm interested in your thoughts. Normally on a long trek, probably about once every seven days, I would use it as a rest day. Because I'm going, probably only going to do 10, 11, maybe 12 at the most days, I thought, I'll probably just hack my way through it. But boy, I'm really feeling it today. Um, it's, yeah, pretty hard work. I don't mind, but the actual, there's not really a big height gain. Um, and the distance, this section isn't particularly long. I'm hoping to actually get close to finishing another section as well. Well, yeah, I'm a pushing it. Is it worth it? Would one extra day make a difference? Don't know. Like I say, interested in your thoughts. Do you have a rest day? And if you do, how often? Right, meanwhile, I'm going to rest and then I might walk. Apparently, this is Offer's Pool. So I'm now on top of what is referred to as Beacon Ring. And this is a old hill fort. And it is believed that, um, that it was occupied between 600 BC and AD 50. So quite some time. But I'd imagine being placed where it is and being so high up, it's just very much a hill fort. Now, luckily for me, there's an overall map here, and it says we are here now. So you can see, definitely more than halfway. I would say probably about a third of the way to go. So we've done two thirds and about a third to go. Apparently, over in that direction is Welsh Pool when Queen Elizabeth II was actually coronated, would you believe they planted the trees in this fashion with it saying ER2. And you can see on this map, E2R laid out in that particular fashion apparently. Yeah, so, there we have it, Beacon Ring. And apparently there is a trig point through there, but the path goes round the ring. Well, I think that's what we'll do and admire the views. I'm afraid this bit by the River Seven is just boringly flat. And in some ways it's not that easy on the mind. The body might not agree though. The only thing of note is that quarry over there. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm kind of covered in a spider's web. 
How strange. So I'm not sure what this is. Very odd. Maybe it's to do with flood control. Bit of a shame, but we're leaving the canal now. So I must have placed called Four Crosses. And this is the underpass going out of the village. I was thinking, yeah, if you have to have an underpass, why not do this to it? And then one of the interesting photos here is Walter Clopton Wingfield invented lawn tennis 1874 and apparently this is where it happened Four Crosses Station so it had a station ah yeah the creamery that makes sense so putting it into perspective, there's four crosses. And I'm doing, going on a kind of route that kind of goes around this way, I think. A bit difficult to tell on that map. So here we are again at the Montgomery Canal. Bridge 99. Gosh, I think even a narrow boat would find that very narrow. So we have a swan, or well, we had a swan, and now at bridge 98, and again, it's so narrow. I don't know why it is, but I've been into England a few times over these past few days. This is the first day I've had an actual welcome. So thank you. So I'm at a disused quarry now, having got my resupply. And apparently this is the border's viewpoint. So the hills that we have directly in front of us, that is the Stretton Hills. Morning folks, didn't get a chance to talk last night. I think it was mainly because I was tired from the, the whole day. I, like I say, I would possibly have used yesterday as a rest day, but I've decided to keep going. At the moment, I'm on target, I think, to do about 11 days. So I'll be pretty happy with that. Today I'm trying to get to Chirk, um, which is about 13 and a half miles away. Really struggling last night to find a, a wild camping spot. And I saw on the map um, a golf course and a hill going up to the golf course. So this golf course probably about 1,000 feet up. I thought, oh, I wonder, wonder what it would be like. Anyhow, um, I'm just over a fence from the golf course on the edge of a woods, which is actually very steep. And again, having a single man tent, meaning a little bit of space, I'm kind of just on a bit of a ridgeway. Um, but yeah, right next to the golf course. Right, less talking, let's get walking. What I found intriguing last night there's actually kind of some steps here. Anyhow, 
this is where I uh, kind of got in. And there, you can see the golf course. I suspect I don't need to check if the trains come in. I think the last train was quite some time ago. I'm surprised the tracks are still here. It must be worth some money to someone. So I've been following these World One Centenary Trail signs for a little while. And then I came to this signpost and it had this added on. Hang on a minute, oh, I'll step back. Obviously added to the office bike sign. Right, more uphill. So I wonder how long these stones have been in place. And then I wonder about these stones. Can see if there's nothing to go glitter on. We're heading mainly in a northerly direction, and I'm fairly certain we end up going through or near Langollen. So according to my map, this doesn't exist. Quite a large body of water. I wonder what someone's building themselves here. Very peaceful. I wouldn't be surprised if it's some kind of fishing enterprise. Well, I've just spotted that as I've come out of a lane entrance. It's a map. It took me a little while to work it out. But hang on guys. So yeah, we started there. And I guess this is the kind of route we've done. And I guess the red glass is where we are now. And then we need to get to Pestatin, near the sea. The green for offer. And then we have the name of the village, or town, I think it's a village, just hang on. So it took me a little while to work out what this beast was doing here. But apparently we're now heading towards this course quite some time ago. So there's a lot of information here and it's all very interesting. Um, but just some of the um, main points. It was built in 1804 um, and this particular building incorporated the umpire's box as well as providing refreshments for the greater comfort of those who could afford it. Right, we can see the actual place or the the course essentially. So there is the castle right in the far distance. I'm not sure how much more opportunity I'll get to take a picture of it but definitely well worth a visit. Under normal circumstances and in fact, if you're doing this path between April and September, or April and October, I think it is, you can actually do a diversion that takes you very close to the castle. So I'm afraid I can't go that way. So a bit of information here. 
completed in 1310, later became the home of the Milton family for over 400 years. I love how these ducks are sheltering from the wind and the rain. Unlike me, of course. Although it was my plan to go underneath there for a moment. I'm sure they won't mind sharing. Hi guys. So I've managed to walk another four miles. So that's, well, it'll soon be 17 for the day. Um, which is certainly enough. However, I'm trying to get to a point for a resupply. Um, I'm completely out of water, um, virtually no food. I think there's a place after um, the canal. So what's happening now is we're walking along um, Langollen Canal over the aqueduct, which is definitely worth seeing. And then somewhere around, I think after that, I think there'll be a place where hopefully I can get resupply. If not, I'm in serious trouble. Um, so yeah, we'll enjoy the canal and the aqueduct. Um, the weather is absolute rubbish. Um, it's a shame really, but hey ho, we get what we get. There you go, constructed over a 10 year period from 1795 to 1805 for the Ellesmere Canal by our good friend Thomas Telford. Right, if you're scared of heights, now's the time to look away. <laughs> 